welcome to my Wyoming garden. We've been back to Wyoming for about a week as we spent the winter in Arizona and everything is blooming. It's just magnificent. But today we're going to work on actually three raised beds. We're going to do some potato planting. We're going to plant brassicas, which are cabbages, broccolis, cauliflowers today. I'm actually going to plant an artichoke and then I'm going to divide up some garlic. At the end, I'm going to show you a recipe right out of the garden early in the year when most of the time you think you don't have anything that you can pick. potatoes are coming through the soil and these are the ones that I chitted and planted in this box in Arizona. Each of the raised beds today are going to get compost, steam manure, oyster shells, soaked molasses, and natural charcoal. And I'm just going to work all that in there. And I'm just using a pointed hoe. It works really easy. And I'll start to make um, just a, a ferrule, some um, trenches for those potatoes. Now there's 12 potatoes in that box. And so I'm gonna actually make four rows and I'm gonna plant three potatoes in each of the, the rows. So what I wanna do is just gently tease each of those potatoes out. I don't wanna cut it, I don't wanna tug on it. It'll just gently tease out. Look at all that root system already. It's fabulous. So I'm just gonna get th those three in that row put them in there so they have some good space that they can grow. And it's really great soil right here. But see all those roots that you can, um, coming off those eyes, they're just gonna grow fabulously. Um, potatoes are kind of a heavy feeder, so you wanna make sure that you give them compost or manures. Um, I like to feed them well till about July and then I don't give them anything after that. So here's the four rows three in each row, and we'll just watch as they push through. So this raised bed is all ready too. So we're gonna put in Snow Crown cauliflower and Pac-Man broccoli. Now on the left side, I'm gonna put the broccoli in, and on the right side, I'm gonna put the cauliflower. And so I'm digging a hole. Now these are ones I purchased because we just didn't have time to make them and not space for me to bring them home from Arizona. So I'm gonna tease those roots. They're a little more root bound than I like, but I take the bottom leaves off, push it around and firm it in. And I'll do this with all four of them. There are basically three types of broccoli and that's the form and shape they are. There's hundreds of varieties. And when we do the cauliflower over here on this other side, we're gonna do the same thing. We are gonna tease it. This is much better, not so root bound, but we are still gonna take those bottom leaves off and like broccoli, there are hundreds of varieties. A cauliflower and a broccoli can cross pollinate. And if you ever bought um, brocco flower, that actually is a cross between a cauliflower and a broccoli. So I'm gonna di um, dig and plant all four of these, making sure that afterwards I really water them in well. And I like to water, leave them for 10 or 15 minutes and water again. Now in these raised beds, they'll get filtered sun today. And then tonight I have plastic that hooks onto these and I'll cover them because the temperature is only gonna be in the 30s tonight. But beautiful plants. So here's the two raised beds that we just did. And then I'm gonna put my um, cabbages over on this raised bed. Now we're using a stone hedge cabbage. All of them are in the brassicas. So cabbages, broccolis, cauliflowers, kale, radishes, Swiss chard are all brassicas. Um, bok choy, there's different things, but they're brassicas. So they all grow basically the same way. They basically have the same needs. And so if you're really giving them a lot of nutrients and water, sunshine, they will really grow for you. Now, cabbages themselves have well over 400 varieties and cabbages come in flat, curly, tight, loose leaves, 
It can be green, it can be white, it can be red, it can be purple. I love cabbages. I love growing them. I love eating them. I love making sauerkraut. And we are fermenting this week later on. And so we will be doing some cabbages. Now this raised bed actually has some seedlings of apple trees that I grew from seed and some just little seedlings for the master gardens, gardeners that I overwintered. And so I'm just going to put that artichoke. It's a green globe artichoke, the same as I grow down in Arizona. And we'll see how big that gets. So let's just water everything in. The broccoli, the cauliflowers, the cabbages, the artichokes, everything. Now this is a bed that has um, garlic in it. Now the garlic wasn't very large when I picked it, when I dug it up last year. So I just put it back into a raised bed and I'm just going to separate these now because you can see they've already swollen up and they've gotten bigger than last year. So I'm going to just do some trenches again and I'll be able to just lay those in there, pack them in, water them good, and just let them grow for the summer. Now these are all hard neck garlics. That's what I like to grow up in Arizona, up in Wyoming. One, because I like their, the scapes that they make to use in a lot of different things. Plus the garlic lasts and lasts and I just love it. Now I've been growing garlic here, mostly Russian garlic, hard neck, for about 15 years. And it has just been a fabulous garlic for us. And there you can see I'm just still working on that, that plot with all of those in there. I've done a trench and I just lay them in and then pack the soil around it and then I'll water in good. So there you can see part of it done. The other half I still have to do. Now this raised bed actually has leeks and chives that I grew from seed. Now a chive leaf is very much like an onion leaf. It's very rounded where a, a leek leaf is very much like a grass. But sometimes when the garden is early, you don't think you have anything that you can take from it. But this chive actually is even about to make flowers, which you can eat the flowers. And I just took my knife and I cut some off because I need a cup of chives for a recipe that I'm working on today. Now this Irish potato dish is called Thump. Um, the ancient name is Stelk. And we're going to use a cup of milk, a cup of chives, four tablespoons of butter, salt, pepper, and boiled potatoes. Now while the potatoes are boiling, I'm taking the milk and the chives. I'm going to simmer boil it for three minutes. See the potatoes are boiling. And when the potatoes get soft, then we can put everything together. Now, after the three minutes, I just put the four tablespoons of butter, salt, pepper into the pan and put a lid on it. When the potatoes are done, I'm going to put part of that milk mixture. I don't like to put all of it in because every time it may be different on the size of your potatoes. The extra, just save for another dish. I've been working outside all day and he's come in for lunch, but I'm having him taste thump. Irish dish that you can use chives and potatoes. So Jill, tell us what you think. Be careful, it could be hot. That's good. Kind of tastes like mashed potatoes, but with a different taste. But it tastes, <clears throat> tastes good. Well, that's a busy morning with My Wyoming Garden, episode one garlic, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbages, artichokes, potatoes. And it's time for lunch. Now, each time I'm going to try to have a recipe. So this is an Irish potato called thump. And an ancient name for it was stelk, which is a funny name. But it's basically mashed potatoes, butter, salt and pepper. I use chives, but you could use onions, but it gives it a great flavor, especially since you cook the chives in with the milk first. So that milk gets that taste in there. So each time I'm going to have a recipe. I hope you enjoyed first episode of my Wyoming garden.